Hey guys, welcome once again to Concept Hunter. My name is Coco Stern, and today we will be covering Troll by Ellen Hazelden and Jonathan Jonathan Whiting. So, it, once again, a game I picked up on Newgrounds is a flash game, and we're gonna jump straight in. I did play a little bit. Uh, I seen the concept. I really like it, and we're gonna cover it. So let's go. And you start off just like this. Eerie music comes up. Really eerie music. And this uh, stealth em up horror game doesn't actually tell you anything. You just have, you, you need to discover that the normal keys walk, and that's it. So obviously spikes, you go through the spikes, you die, and then there's this eerie sound that kind of scares you and raises an eyebrow, but other than that, it's good. And we check out the new, the first monster, and you'd expect this monster to see you and then trample you, and then it doesn't happen. What does happen is, if you actually look at it, exactly that. Your character gets terrified and runs away. There's that um, MGS Turum that comes up, and you just lose control of the character. It's important to note that you lose control of the character, and she just runs away. Now, the blob is very happy to blink and just stand there. Doesn't really care about anything, but my character is the one that actually moves from in case this happens. So this is actually, that was an introduction, this is a first puzzle. And I've already solved it, again I've played a little bit, but the thing that it's important to note here is how the game really works. Remember I have only four keys, which are the four directional buttons. And I am always looking in the direction that I, I pressed. And I also have to get to the direction that I press. So if I'm, I'm looking to the left right now, if I press right, I will have to go either through the top or the bottom. I'm not exactly sure what um, what decides if it's through the top or bottom, but it is through one of them. So right now I, I turned around in half a circle, look to the bottom, and then look to the um, to the right in this case. So um, other than the four directional buttons and obviously diagonal as well, you can go diagonally, you always have to use, move either clockwise or counterclockwise as you're walking, which is very important to note, because it means I can't just look from the right to the left, I have to go through top or bottom, and that can be very, very meaningful. And right now, my character is super scared, and I have to go, this one is the, the first one that was actually a little bit difficult, so I have to go all the way up here, and then... I, see, I can't go through there, so I have to go through the left, bottom, and then right and bottom, and I managed to pass him. Now, there's obviously a scroll at the bottom left, so this one actually doesn't pop up, and you can go in this direction. And now there's this cute puzzle, I guess. It's not really a puzzle, you just have to watch where you're walking and see where you can continue. And uh, this is a little addition. To, to the actual concept. The actual concept is, again, with the, the vision and the being scared. And this is kind of um, out of place for me, I think. I mean, you could remove this part of the game, specifically just this map, because it just it's not in place. It's just, it's a little bit not amazing. And then you get to the scroll, and there's obviously gibberish and uh, just unintangible crap. Remember, this is a purely concept game. Which is, in contrast to um, previous episodes and previous games that we've, we looked at, this game doesn't try to do anything other than concept. I mean, there's the scrolls is supposedly something a little bit difficult other than the main story, which is just move forward. You can also collect, try and collect the scrolls, and that's a, an added difficulty and an added bonus and uh, just for completion. If this was an actual game, there'd be some sort of story on the scrolls, which is fine, but um, and, and maybe an interesting story that connects to the mechanic, who knows? But this isn't the case here. We don't want, we don't need it in this case. It's just a concept. And here we're introduced to the first monster that can move on its own. And there's, there's nothing, there's no interaction. Once again, if I look at it, I run away. The monster doesn't care. It just keeps moving along its path. It does not care. Which again, is pretty interesting because this is a stealth game and you're essentially hiding from the monsters, but you're hiding from yourself. You're the scared... You're scared. The monsters don't care. 
they're just there, they're just moved. And a, a nice point, if you look at the tiles, you can actually see the path the monster is moving at. I didn't actually notice this at first. Uh, it took me a little bit, a while to figure this out, to, to, to really see it. But there's tiles that don't affect me, I can move through them. But that's the tiles that uh, dictate the monster's movement, which is which is a cute a cute touch, if you actually see it. If not, you just have to look at the, at the um, how they move, and that's about it. It's a pattern that repeats. So this one is actually a little bit difficult. Again, I've passed a couple of levels, so I know how it looks like in here. There we go. I managed to do it. You really have to think. This level really started to make you think about how you need to you need to do something um, timed there's a, a timing element here because you have to do it correctly and I pressed space to remove the the, the random unintangible stuff and here you once again this is I need to time this correctly and do this in the correct fashion because if not I'll I'll miss out and that's because they move because they move in a specific pattern I have to match the pattern in terms of what I want to in what I want to walk in so that was the first really hard part, again, it's, well, it was an optional part. And here we have a pretty easy but still uh, some sort of introductory level where they, they move and I'm just, just gonna wait for them to move and go up. There we go, now I can look in this direction. I get the scroll, I'm gonna stand right here not looking at anything at the wall. The monster slides past me, inches by me, I just don't look at it, so I really don't care. And, and that's a, a really interesting thing. And here, what we talked about earlier with the diagonal, um, with the diagonal vision and how it actually works. This is really interesting. This is exactly what I talked about earlier. Because I'm going up, and let's say I want to look to the right because I want to walk to the right. If I was to look in the right direction right now and look at the scroll, I would be fine because there's nothing in my way. But, in order to get to looking right, I have to go um, clockwise and look at that eye, and then I'll be scared. So, if, I'm just gonna press right, and I, I have to look at, in, in that direction, which basically kills me. So I can't actually do anything, I have to go up. I can't pick that scroll up at this moment. It's impossible. And that's something that's, that's, it's a really interesting mechanic. And in one sense, you feel a bit helpless. And then once you understand how to do it, it's clever. It's really clever. And here we're introduced to a new mechanic. And this mechanic is these mirror tiles. I guess they're not really mirror. I thought they were mirror at the, at the beginning, but they, um, they can't be broken in. I'm just gonna wait till it moves. You can look through them and run away, but you can't break them. If I walk through them, nothing happens. The thing is, and we're not gonna be trying to be clever, there's actually more scrolls to the right of this section just by my camera. Uh, we're gonna ignore that just for a second, then we're gonna ignore the, the right area as well because we wanna get through the concepts of the game and not uh, actually go through all of it. And here you're forced to deal with this new mechanic. And what these tiles do is you can't walk through them, but you can run terrified through them. Uh, which means that if, if I get scared, I do break them. And this is really interesting. This is taking the basic mechanic of the game, which is the, the, the entire concept here, and building on top of it in a very clever way. And I really, really like that. And now, obviously, I, I looked, I pressed to the, uh, I pressed bottom. So I looked and immediately ran away. I pick it up and I can't do anything other than walk to the left. And we're going to play just a little bit more and check out the next monster, which is, in this case, sleeping, one-eyed. And here we, we're introduced to one of the last mechanics that we'll get in this game, which is direct manipulation. And I'll show you. We look at it, and it screams at us and actually moves. And this means that I actually have some power. I can actually manipulate the environment. In addition to the, the broken the tiles that I can break, which is basically a doorway, this is really a lot of manipulation that I can do here. Because I can make it run away um, to this location, and then I can just clear pretty much the entire area. 
Now, obviously, there's this, the, the tiles here, so he's far away enough and look in this direction, and it'll run through it and I'll pass this section. So, obviously, there's how much do I run away, at what speed, at what speed this moves, and how much it moves when I look at it. There's a lot of variables here that can be changed and messed around with if we are to build on top of them. But this is just the, the basic concept here. And uh, again, a level that it's just a passage to another one, which is kind of a waste of time, I believe. But uh, we're going to ignore this because it's not the main part here. Here we have a really interesting puzzle. And this is one that I haven't actually uh, had the time to sit down. I didn't finish the game completely and gotten all the scrolls. I, I didn't do it yet. I want to. I intend to do it because it's really cool. Hopefully I'll get around to it. And as we actually pass already 10 minutes, we're going to wrap things up. So the concept is really, really cool. I really like it. It's very strong. And they do something very smart here. They take the basic concept, the basic concept that they thought about, and they build on top of it. So. I'm scared of monsters, and then the monsters, the monsters are stationary, and obviously then the monsters stop moving. And then my running away mechanic makes me break into things, and then I can manipulate the environment. And you take the core concept and you build on top of it, which is very smart. And there's obviously a lot of other things you can do, such as more plays with vision. This game, um, towards the end of it, you actually get a blindfold, which makes the entire screen black. I'm not going to show you because uh, we haven't reached it, but the entire screen black, but everything is still there. So you have to memorize what's happening. And obviously if you walk on spikes, then you're going to die, but you can't make the monsters, you, you can't look at the monsters, so you can't lose control of your character. You just have to tread carefully. Which is really, really smart. Again, more plays with vision. You take the core mechanic, you build on top of it. There's a ton more to think and to do here. It's a short game. I really recommend you try it out. Again, it's on Newgrounds. Its name is Traal, which is T-R-A-A-L. We're going to give credit where credit is due. So we're going to scroll a little bit to the bottom here. The author is Drakeneck, which is actually Ellen Hazelden and Jonathan Whiting. This is a puzzle horror stealth em up game, uh, according to their description. It's called Traal. You can find it on Newgrounds. And this has been Concept Hunter. Thank you very much for watching. Play the game. Check it out. Tell me in the comments what you think um, about the show. Maybe you have suggestions for more things. And uh, did you manage to, to pass it off, to pass it all without uh, getting frustrated or anything like that? And I will see you next time. So, bye-bye.